Hello, good day. My name is Heino Dahmen. I'm a German Master of Crafts and I work for a community-based organization in Mombasa, Kenya, in Mtwapa to be precise. Behind us is the beautiful Mtwapa Creek. The subject of Fundi Kipusa is actually to invent or modify technology suitable for the developing industry and for the local market, obviously. That means we take complicated processes down to easy, easy follow-up things that we can do. Our last challenge came from an uh, NGO called CAST. These people grow cassava countrywide or I believe even worldwide. And their biggest problem is that after harvesting the cassava root, they end up with a lot of stem and wood material. So these are cassava stems here. I have been told, or we have been told, that there is up to 4,000 cassava plants on an acre that can be six to 8,000 of those stems very tall. So it's a lot of waste material. The question was, would we be able to use this material to the fullest to add so much value to the cassava growing? So what we did and came up with is a carbonizer, which I can show you right now here. It's made from standard drums, like all development from Fundi Kipusa. It's really simple and easy to copy. Once you know how to, it is easy to do. This is an internal combustion carbonizer. In other words, it does not need much heat. Still a little bit of a secret of how exactly we did it. That is why we are not going to show it in so much detail. But it has to give you an idea a chamber here where we can reach the inside. So if it's filled with cassava stand material, we can control oxygen and fire from here. The product that this actually carbonizer produces, and it's a very mobile carbonizer, those can stand to hundreds in the fields, and they can be made by any local fundi. All our development is based on local tools, local skills, and local availability of material. So, out of those stems here, we carbonized, and these are only just some examples, this wonderful charcoal product. Now, what surprised us was the great porosity of actually the cassava stem charcoal. It absorbs unbelievable amounts of water and is therefore extremely suitable to produce biochar. Funikipusa, as a CBO, we have a system how to precharge biochar with fertilizer, organic fertilizer, and that is actually yeah, a combat tool number one against this certification, but uh, not to be discussed in public yet. We are looking for a neither private or governmental partner for this project. The smaller tricks of the cassava stems carbonize straight into a very brittle material that can be powderized immediately and then be used to press briquettes from it, ecological useful briquettes for which no tree has to die. We come to that later. We did a further test with the material and uh, that is based on chopping it into very small parts then it's modified with, again, another little secret from Fondikipusa, a mixture that we use to make a grow media from it. We developed this huge uh, sterilizer here. It's nothing else than a very big cooking pot, currently full of material of these cassava stems, and it's now, with a little bit of fire underneath, can be sterilized. And then being used, and here is the funny bit, as an excellent growing media for oyster mushrooms. This one here are the same cassava stems. It's the same material that was delivered to us. It has micellated and grown flowered in almost no time. It is an unbelievable, efficient growing media for oyster mushrooms. So that closes the chain of the usage of the cassava plant because nothing of the plant is left Everything of it is converted into something useful. And to make it now complete, Martin, Martin, just come here, please. 
Martin is the person who has actually physically developed all that, uh, has prepared from the cassava charcoal that we made from the material that was delivered to us by uh, CAST, the NGO. So he has already made the base that we use to press briquettes from. And this is our briquette press here, which we have just filled with some of the material. And we hope we can demonstrate you right now the last step in the value-adding chain, making actually the briquette. This is not a very spectacular machine like all our developments again. The machine is developed in a way that can be reproduced in Kenya and that means anywhere in Kenya. Not in a high sophisticated equipped workshop, but in a really local rural workshop. Because that's the technology that the modern farmer will need. So it's a very basic machine. It runs on only one kilowatt of power. We can run it with solar energy with ease, actually double the capacity and even a grinder. To make the briquette now, we bring the medium in. And wait until we found the right consistency of it. I believe Martin, we have to make it a little bit more wet. Now we see that's still a little bit loose and brittle, so we will use a little bit more starch. And that is exactly the point where we come to the peel of the cassava. As you all know, the cassava peel itself is not very useful. It contains uh, toxin uh, and has to be removed, but we can actually boil it, produce the starch out of it, reduce that, and use it now as a binding agent in our uh, charcoal material. So it will, in other words, stick the briquettes together. Yeah, and that puts now the chain really complete. Let me get my hands a bit wet now to make sure that we get a nice, nice mixture. That looks already fantastic. So, let's see what we can do now. So these are the first ones. You never lose them because you can reuse them again. Now we have some which are slightly more wet. And here comes your cassava briquette, the way it should be. You put them on the table for drying. And that is all there is to it. A fast and stress-free process. Not much trouble, not very spectacular. But what it does is, it closes the chain of the use of the cassava plant. Wonderful briquettes. In fact, actually, we found that the cassava dust from cassava charcoal makes a very, very efficient briquette. I believe it has something to do with the lightness of the wood. Cassava is fast growing wood. That might also be the reason why the mushrooms grow so well in it. So if you look at this briquette here, this is a gourmet briquette and so on. So a single person can produce or more. This ones here, we just make them now and give them to cast back together with our research results. Our recommendation to the world and agriculture industry in the world that deals with cassava is definitely to use the stems and carbonize them Redder them and use them as a growing media for mushroom and use them as pre-charged biochar and only the absolute waste of it you would need to produce briquettes from it. Because as a biochar it seems to be very, very valuable. It holds huge amounts of moisture and nutrients for that matter. So, here comes the last one for the day, that is the total proof. Briquettes made from cassava waste, all developed 
researched, manufactured in Kenya by Kenyans with my exception. But trust me, I'm not the main active person here. I'm really just the trainer and the teacher and sometimes the one who comes with a good idea. But my stuff and my think tank are highly efficient. In fact, this entire project here took us a developing time from the delivery of the material to the brickets that you see on the table here of less than three weeks. In our aquaponic system, which we are going to show in a later video, we have some cassava biochar also already running there. And we managed to sprout oka plants within four days in just activated pre-charged biochar from cassava stands. So if you are interested in pushing the cassava farming any further, and add value to it and give something for the farmers that makes them money and betters their life. Carbonize it, make briquettes from it, put it back on the field as a fertilizer, sterilize it and grow mushrooms for all these wonderful other minerals and vitamins to eat. Thank you very much. That's all for now from Fundikipusa. Check us out on Facebook because we have many, many, many interesting projects. Thank you.